All right, this presentation is going to be on the basic sales management functions. Now, when we go through this, don't think that I'm just talking to you about sales management because that's jumping the gun just a little bit. We're still talking about you and your sales techniques. But this is an interesting perspective and then the, what we're going to actually cover, the different topics we're going to cover, <clears throat> pardon me, is they're very important. Okay, let's talk about how you might be motivated, how might you might be managed. So this is both for you to understand how you might be motivated and managed as a salesperson and also how you might manage other salespeople. <clears throat> You're probably going to do both in your lifetime, so let's let's talk about it. And you'll see how this can apply both ways. Basic sales management functions. You'll end up with a lot of salespeople around you, whether you're a salesperson or whether you're directing salespeople, that that they're they're troubling. They're an interesting group of people, and I've been one, so I can I can say that without being offensive, hopefully. Um, but you'll have people walk in, and some days they're awesome. They could sell ketchup uh, ketchup popsicle to woman in white gloves, as the saying goes. Other times they're absolutely worthless. And you sit there and stare at them and you go, what's the matter with you? What's going on? Motivating salespeople is challenging. Okay, there's some things that are stereotypical, some things that were kind of predictable, but even they don't work all the time. So we end up with this continual cycle of how do I get these people working harder and selling more? Um, so it boils down to this, this topic right here, the directing average people to perform at above average levels. Every time we start talking about motivation, whether it's in a management class or it's in this type of a class, we have people who kind of bridle a little bit at this comment of trying to motivate people and trying to get them to work harder. And you're like, well, why why would we do that? In general, this is not just for the benefit of the company, but for the benefit of the salesperson. I've had employees before, albeit not salespeople, that I was trying to motivate them to work harder so they keep their job. Because at the level they were currently working, I was going to have to let them go. Now, in some cases, I was successful. In other cases, I was not successful and had to let them go. That was the things that keep you up at nights when you're thinking back on management responsibilities. But you're trying to get them to work harder, not just so the company can make more money, even though that's still an okay goal. You're also doing it for their benefit. Very few people are going to be happier as a below-average employee just making ends meet than they would be if they were an excellent employee, selling a whole bunch of stuff, getting accolades, doing very well for themselves, taking care of their customers, that looks more like a happy, you know, progressive employee than one who is just barely scraping by. So when we talk about motivation, don't think that this is some type of a sweatshop, you know, push them to make sales at any cost. That's not what I'm talking about. Now, sometimes it comes off that way, especially when you have somebody who's under a lot of stress, but that is not what we're talking about here. What we really want is to have our employees really achieve their potential, which is usually a lot higher than they come in with, and it takes a lot of work. All right, so we're going to look at the motivation, compensation, talk a little bit about leadership. A lot of what we're going to talk about is compensation, but here we go. The motivational mix, to choose your ingredients carefully. Um, far too often we end up with motivation that goes awry. All right. Uh, one of the very recent example happened with Fel Wells Fargo. Okay, you've read about that one. Uh, you end up with you end up people get bonuses or they would keep from being fired by how many upgrades they would sell or how many accounts they would open or how many different services you would have customers sign up for. Wonderful, right? That's something we want to encourage. You know, we want people to be talking to customers and finding out their needs and saying, hey, you've got a checking in the savings account right now, but what about a money market account? What about a home equity loan? What about a credit card? What about all these different things that we offer? If they need it and we can sell it to them, then it's a win-win. Win-win-win, actually. Win for the customer, win for the salesperson, win for the company. Everyone's happy. But what actually happened was far different. We went off of that ideal situation, and instead we had what? We had people doing it fraudulently. We had people opening up accounts for customers that didn't know they even had them, all to make those numbers. And we it's really easy to think of all these employees who did that as villains when at some point they're doing it, it's an accepted thing in the company, they figure it's not actually hurting the customer in most cases, that didn't always work out, but I'm sure that they thought that, um, 
Anyway, you ended up with a motivational tactic saying we're going to evaluate you based on these numbers that turned very, very badly. And, you know, CEO had to step down. There's people being, a whole bunch of people were fired. Wells Fargo is not going to see the end of this one for years. So you have to be careful how we do things. Because as human beings, we're very, very good at looking at, okay, what is it that you want from me? How are you motivating me? How are you incentivizing me? And I will give you that. If all you want for me to do is be cheerful, I'll be cheerful. I might not work very hard, but I'll be very cheerful. If you want me to work really hard, fine. <clears throat> I'll post a whole bunch of impressive numbers, but that's all you're going to get from me. So we have to find ways to motivate people that come at it from different ways and different angles to make sure that we have people doing exactly what we want and moving in the right direction. So we have basic compensation. We'll talk about how that goes. Special financial incentives, think bonuses. Non-financial rewards, what about contests? What about you know prizes that are non-financial? What about um, recognition, appreciation, accolades? Leadership techniques, we'll talk about that just a little bit. And the management control procedures, we won't talk about as much. We have to remember compensation is more than money. Uh, people starting out in the sales industry often think a lot about the money. And there's a reason for that. There's a lot of money in sales. If you make me $10,000 and I have to pay you $1,000, I'll do that every minute for the rest of the day. Okay, easily. No problem, have a good time. So especially when you end up with high dollar amount products that you're selling, you can make a lot of money in sales, huge amounts of money. It, it's crazy if you're doing it right and you have, have that there. But remember, it's not just the money. You have the direct financial rewards, you have career advancement, you have non-financial compensation, you have different things we can toss in there that make this interesting. When you first start out, we're probably interested in the compensation. The longer you're in, the more these other things tend to come into play. I know a lot of salespeople, when they get to a certain point, they're making a lot of money, they've made a lot of money, they are happy, they have customers who are coming back to them, and trying to motivate them to go any further than that is like pulling teeth, and you almost can't do it because they're happy, they're where they are, they're making a whole lot of money, and why mess with them? Well, because they have untapped potential. They could do even more. But how do you get them past that if they don't really need the money anymore? Um, financial rewards actually ends up being a less effective reward in the long run. And we'll talk about that in other classes. Don't you worry. All right. Let's look at some different types of salary plans. Right up here at the top. Top left. Straight salary. $60,000 a year and you will sell things for me. Um, that's not a bad idea, but what happens if I am someone who sells quarter million dollars a year and you're paying me 60,000, are we happy? Sure. You know, you're making a whole bunch of money off of me, but what happens if I'm the person selling a million dollars for you, you're still paying me 60,000 and the guy making 250,000, which I can see that cause I'm watching him every day. All of a sudden we have a problem. And I'm going to address that and come in and say, I'm selling a lot more. You should be paying me more. And if I say no, what's going to happen? Instead of selling a million dollars, which takes a lot of effort, I'm probably going to reduce that down to about 250 Enough so you aren't going to fire me because I'm doing as well as everybody else, but you make a lot less money. So there's not a lot of motivation here to excel, to do any more. There's a lot of motivation to do enough to keep your 60000 a year, but trying to get them to go beyond that not going to work out as well. All right, so let's go with the other polar opposite. Straight commission. This one is, is kind of fun. It's kind of like an airplane ride. Okay, I've always had kind of a zen type approach to riding on airplanes because if an airplane crashes, everybody dies. <laughs> I mean, there are exceptions, but very, very few. For the most part, everyone dies. So there's kind of black and white. We crash, we all die. Uh, with a car crash, you have to wonder if I'm going to be hurt, not going to be hurt at all, have to worry about insurance, all those things. There's questions. Airplane ride, there's no questions. Straight commission, you sell nothing, you make nothing. You cost me nothing as your manager, and you make no money. Very simple. If you make a whole bunch of sales, then you make a whole bunch of money. Look, I mean, this one's up to 200000 If you go up to, you know, 2 and $3 million in sales, we're over here, you're 60000 at $4, million, $4 million in sales. So it's all on you. If you're able to sell a whole bunch, you can make a whole bunch of money. If you don't sell very much, you make less. 
I worked for a place and worked for a couple places that were direct commission. And yeah, if you don't want to get out of bed in the morning, you make zero dollars. Very simple. If you go out and bust your tail and sell a whole bunch of stuff, you make a whole bunch of money. It's nice. But there's no security blanket here, and there's a lot of motivation for fraud. Because if I have to sell that one more thing to try and pay my mortgage and keep my children inside, I'm going to sell whatever it is. And sometimes that ends up with some unethical things happening. Uh, salary plus commission on sales. So you have 60000 plus 1%. Here we had 7%. Here we're saying you get the sixty grand, all your mortgage is paid for, everything is taken care of, and here's the incentive. You want to sell more, you make more. Okay, so we'll start at 60,000, we're up here, we started at zero, and we're going to climb, where here we start at 60,000 and stay the same. This is probably by far the most popular way of doing things, because we don't want them so hungry that they're doing things that are fraudulent or that get us in trouble, but we still incentivize them. Okay, so this one's pretty popular. It's a solid way to do things. Now, salary plus the commission over the quota. So here we're saying we got 60000 we have a quota saying you're going to make me this much money to get your $60,000 is basically what that's saying. You're going to sell this much at $1.5 million. Hey, I will start to now that you've made your initial salary back, you can start making more money by selling more stuff. And here we go. Instead of 7% at 6%, as soon as you hit that, off you go. Make a whole bunch of money. Okay, not as much likely as this straight commission because your percentage is lower, but you're still going to make a lot of money. Also, a good way to do it, this was one you'll see more often. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, you have to remember, though, compensation is more than money. All right, bonuses. You have to be very careful with bonuses because when you start studying motivational theory, as soon as something is expected, it's no longer motivational. Okay, so if you know that I'm going to give, I give out a thousand dollar bonus at Christmas time. The first time it's really cool. I announce, hey, here's a thousand dollars. Party time. After that, the next year, what happens if I give you a thousand dollars? Well, you've already expected it, right? It's Christmas time. Where's my thousand dollars? If I don't give it to you, whoa, you are upset because now I just took a thousand dollars away from you that you had expected. The expectation is the interesting part. So, careful with bonuses. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they are not. You can have an across-the-board bonus. Everyone gets $1,000 because we've had a really good year. Great. Performance bonuses. You know, if you make this much this month, I'll give you an extra bonus. That can be motivational. Sales contests. <laughs> I won one of these once. It was quite fun. Salespeople generally, the ones who choose to make that their career, are a little more competitive, a little more ego driven, which is not a bad thing, is saying, I want to be the best. Often, especially for those salespeople who are already making a lot of money, they're already successful, they already kind of have everything dialed in, a sales contest is almost the only way to get them up and moving a little bit faster to say, well, let's see who's the best salesperson. <laughs> well, that's going to be me. Prove it. And now you got some, you got some fun happening. Uh, remember that there's also the non-financial reasons, um, achievement or recognition, transfer to the bigger departments, bigger numbers. Even if it's not really about the money, it's still I'd like to be selling this instead of this. Um, salespeople do get bored, and at some point and they want to either go bigger or go different or go something else but again very ego driven very competitive so achievement recognition transfer to something bigger uh, sometimes management possibilities although not everybody wants to go into management sometimes there's not as much money there a sales managers praise actually means quite a bit now different leadership styles you have we're just going to mention this briefly sales manager and salesperson decide together participates persuades, delegates, or tells. You have different types of people that those work with. The low task, high people, high task, high people. You can read about those more in the chapter. Okay. Taking a look at those basic sales management functions, take a look at these. Finding the right people, the right situations, the right training, and moving everybody in the right direction is the point. If you're one of the salespeople, realize this is what your boss is trying to do with you. They want you to make more, not just for the company, but for you. And if you're the sales manager, this is what you're going to be doing all the time. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please let me know, and good luck.